European M&A activity has picked up substantially this year, looking set to surpass the 10-year average for the first time since 2007. With over $350 billion in deals by value, we are already comfortably exceeding 2013's relatively subdued totals. We expect this trend will continue with a shift in corporate's attitude towards the economic environment in Europe and supportive dynamics in some industries, such as healthcare and telecoms. Credit quality has remained stable as we have not yet seen the return of large debt-funded M&A in Europe. This may change going forward, however, as confidence increases and companies take advantage of ample liquidity in the debt markets. On this edition of Inside Credit, I'm speaking to Marketa Horkova, a senior analyst in the consumer goods team, about one of the sectors in which we're seeing a lot of this activity, pharmaceuticals. Welcome, Marketa. Pleasure to be here. So there's been a lot of activity in the pharmaceutical sector recently. Tell us what's driving this activity. As my boss says, uh, the transaction in, in pharma industry are like London buses. Nothing happens for a long time and then they all come at, at once. And I think that's, that's, that's the similar what's happening now. Uh, we think that um, the drivers of the transaction we've seen over the last couple of months are very different to what we've seen in the past. Previously, companies uh, searched uh, targets to ramp up their pi pipelines in uh, expectation of uh, patent expiries. Uh, we think that that patent cliff is over now and therefore the drivers uh, for the transactions are very different. We believe that uh, the reasons are that uh, companies are looking at streamlining their operations, they're looking at solidifying their market positions and uh, the examples are the recent transactions for example between Novartis and GlaxoSmithKline where Novartis uh, disposed of its vaccine division to Glaxo and GlaxoSmithKline disposed of its oncology division to Novartis because both companies realized they don't have the leading market positions and therefore they can't drive the synergies that they were looking for. Um, and uh, that's very different to what we've seen in the past where the transactions, for example, when Glaxo acquired Beecham or where AstraZeneca was formed, uh, when uh, the companies were really looking for scale. So the price tickets are also very different. The previous transactions were in the $100 billion range. Now we're looking at sort of mid teen billion okay. dollar range. Okay, and are there any differences between the activity we're seeing in the US versus Europe at the moment? Uh, yes, uh, in, in the US uh, the, um, the drivers are again slightly different as we've seen in, in the recent um, what has done sou sour uh, takeover of uh, Pfizer of AstraZeneca. Uh, we, we believe uh, that the primary reason there was um, that uh, Pfizer is looking uh, for um, tax, uh, tax savings, uh, how to get access to cash trap in overseas and also how to support uh, their pipeline. Uh, uh, the transaction is coming in a hundred, over hundred billion dollar range, so it's on the larger scale. Uh, that's also similar to Valiant uh, trying to take over Allergen, which is coming in over sort of fifty billion dollar ballpark, and uh, that's for Allergen, um, Valiant trying to um, uh, bump up its pipeline because their strategy is to focus on acquiring drugs via acquisition rather than inside uh, development. So, so very, very different, very different reasons. Uh, also, in Europe, we see that companies are still looking a bit uh, further uh, in, in, into the time where, for example, Bayer is uh, uh, cementing its position as one of the leading players in over-the-counter and uh, consumer healthcare uh, uh, side, where uh, they think that later on some of the products which are currently on prescription can be transferred to over-the-counter. Okay. So that it's a future planning, but slight, uh, slightly more diversification than what we would see in, in the U.S. Okay, okay. And what has been the impact in terms of our credit rating actions from some of these deals that are happening in Europe? Uh, we haven't really seen uh, any, any impact. All of our ratings uh, so far has been affirmed. Uh, and the reason is twofold. One is that uh, uh, transactions are not on large scale, they're not transformative. So for our assessment of the business risk profile, they are neutral. Uh, on the financial uh, side, we already bake or factor in into our uh, credit assessment the possibility of significant uh, large scale acquisitions happening in the pharmaceutical industry. So 
for example, uh, in Novartis' case, where the anchor rating would come at double uh, A plus, we factor in two notches uh, down uh, for financial policy. So therefore, the rating is double uh, A minus, which leaves the company with uh, significant or sufficient headroom to do these uh, significant or acquisitions without the impact on its credit risk profile. Okay. So going ahead, I mean, we, we haven't seen as many of the transformative acquisitions in Europe. Are we still going to continue to see activity in Europe? Will we see the larger ones as well? Uh, we believe yes, uh, because uh, the pharmaceutical industry, despite the companies being of a significant size, is relatively uh, fragmented. Uh, for example, Pfizer and Novartis, uh, the two leading companies, only have 6% uh, market share, which is relatively low. Uh, therefore, we see there is an there is opportunity to do so. And uh, we think it, some of them will be on a significant scale, as we saw the signal of Pfizer bidding for AstraZeneca, which would be an industry transformative uh, transaction. So we, f we think we will see more of on the small scale, but we think um, there will be pop-up of these big big ones as well. Yeah, and there's also a lot of um, appetite on the debt side as well as we saw with the SFR transaction in the telecom industry that there's a lot of um, appetite for debt financed M&A in the capital market, so that could help as well. Yes. Okay, well thanks so much for joining us. Pleasure. <laughs> that concludes this edition of Inside Credit. Thanks for joining us.